You know, the sucker spawn fly is another effective egg uh, uh, or attractor fly that we use extensively and, and it really gives a lot of people uh, trouble when they first try and figure out how to tie it. Uh, it's an interesting fly. It has quite a history to it. Uh, it's been used for many, many, many years in central Pennsylvania. Uh, they fished it in the springtime for trout when suckers were spawning and, and hence the name from it. Uh, but it's developed in other names, the egg cluster fly uh, and, and various other things. But uh, it's just a jumble of yarn on a hook. Uh, we tie it in a bunch of different colors so it serves both as an egg imitator and an attractor. Uh, and once you see it tied one time, it becomes pretty simple, uh, but it does create difficulties for beginning tires often. Uh, probably the, the favorite hook for this fly is the Daiichi 1530, a really sharp, heavy wire, wet fly type hook. Uh, there's times that I'll use the, uh, again, the, the curved shank scud hook for this also. Uh, and probably the most common sizes we tie it in would be a 12 uh, or a 14. So I'm going to put a size 12 hook in for this pattern. And again, we use various types of yarn uh, to make this fly. Uh, that's the key to it. We have to use a two or a three ply yarn or even you know more, uh, more plies in the yarn to make this fly. Uh, the original fly was tied with Angora yarn and it's still the favorite material by a lot of people. Uh, I found that I'll use various types of yarn depending on the color that I want to create. Okay. Again, even the glow bug micro yarn is a good material to use for this fly too. But again, in, in keeping things original, I'm going to tie this, uh, this pattern uh, in its original form. Again, I've got a fairly light thread here, and again, we're going to use orange or typically red uh, and like a 6 aught style thread. I'm going to start that on the hook shank, advance it back to the bend of the hook, and again, trim off the excess. Now what I've done here is I've taken my Angora yarn and separated into the individual plies that make up the yarn. I'm going to trim those even. The first step here is I'm going to tie this yarn in right at the bend of the hook. Get it lashed down solidly. Again, and make sure the thread's back to start at the bend of the hook again. Then we're going to pull all three sections of yarn over and make a little loop with them. I'm going to lash that loop down, tie it down tight with a couple turns of thread. And the next step here is the key to tying this fly successfully and what gives people problems most of the time. What I need to do here is pick up the yarn that's sticking forward, pull it back, and advance my thread up in the front of that. Okay, now I'm going to repeat the process. Make another loop of yarn. Tie it down. Pull the yarn back. Advance the thread forward. And I just keep doing this procedure down the shank of the hook. Again, it'll take several more loops of yarn doing that. Till I fill up the shank of the hook to the eye. When I get up to the eye of the hook, I'm going to tie the, th or tie the yarn down, trim off the excess, form a little head. Put my whip finish on. Trim the thread off and the fly is complete. You can see what I've got here is a series of loops of yarn up the side of the hook. And probably one of the things that makes this fly so effective is that when a, a fish picks it up, uh, all these little loops of yarn will get caught in its teeth and it's a little bit harder uh, for the fish to expel this fly than some of the conventional egg patterns. If you like this video, hit subscribe. It helps out a lot. And check out these videos. We think you might like them too.